people from all religious communities feel secure in the knowledge that our government is defending the religious beliefs and freedom very seriously and as enshrined in the constitution. If this department is handled well and plays its part well, our state should definitely benefit from the promises of peace, harmony, unity, and religious tolerance in our multi-religious society. As we all know, Trans Speaker, when Sarawak joined Sabah and Malaya to form Malaysia, one of the main concerns of our forefathers in Sarawak was the protection of this religious freedom among our people. In their foresight, and in order to protect this religious freedom from being curtailed, it was agreed that there would be no state religion in Sarawak. It was therefore the intention of our forefathers to preserve the religious harmony and tolerance that is unique to Sarawak, and that no religion shall dominate over any others in our state. This state of harmonious religious tolerance had come with a great price paid by our forefathers, and which had allowed Sarawak today to enjoy the status of a modern state of peace, racial, and religious harmony. This status should therefore be very zealously guarded by all concerned. The people should therefore like to know, would therefore like to know what are the plans of the non-Islamic unit to assist the non-Muslim religious communities, especially in terms of financial allocations and lands for the building of their own religious premises. Trans Speaker, the reason why I touch on financial allocations is because all this time, these communities have been left to their own devices to raise funds for their own upkeep, maintenance and growth of their respective religion. Yes, I realize that some grants have been made in most years and even by some honorable members of this house who made allocations from the, uh, from the RTP funds. This is indeed very commendable, but these are usually not sufficient, especially when funds are needed for renovations of the buildings. And also, surely not being allocated an annual grant from the state budget tantamount to the lack of acknowledgement by the state government of their importance and of the contributions which they have made to our society at large. Trans Speaker, I feel that even though this unit is supposedly meant for discussion of religious issues only, practical <coughs> issues like this concerning religious matters have to be addressed as a lack of financial assistance for some religious bodies might, might reflect poorly on the sincerity of our government to defend the religious freedom of all communities in the state. This in turn might promote ill will and resentment which might not all go well for the religious tolerance among all races. There is much to be done for this specially created department, Trans Speaker, and it is time to really bring it to life to help to foster better understanding and harmony among the people of Sarawak. This unit should look into, into moving its scope from being a mere platform for discussion to a platform of implementing policies to achieve racial and religious tolerance among our people. Perhaps to better achieve this, the government may look into opening branches of the unit in all major towns in our state. Number five, air connectivity. For years, we've been told to expect better air connectivity for Cebu. When Sarawak Corridor of Renew Renewable Energy was launched, we were optimistically told that more people will come to Cebu on account of that. And on that basis, our ministers will ask for more air links to Cebu. And just last year, we were told that efforts would be made to increase the schedule flights to and from Cebu, especially on the cebu Kota Kinabalu route in view of the visit Cebu year this year. We saw the open sky for Cebu signature campaign, which sought 300,000 signatures. Cebu Singapore route was also on the table. Malindo A opened and closed for a Cebu Kuala Lumpur route. All the hopes and expectations were raised and dashed. The lack of A connectivity for Cebu town has, only, has been openly acknowledged. And yet, despite year after year, promise after promises, our A connectivity status remains abysmal. Phase remains exorbitantly high and flights limited. And this has compelled a lot of students and those staying out stations to forego many trips back to, to town for holidays and festivals. This year is visit Cebu year, and yet we don't see any obvious significant increase of tourist and economic activities in town. In fact, I was just asked the other day by a friend in all sincerity as to when is visit Cebu year exactly. And it's already half year gone. I have no doubt that this air connectivity issue contributes to the seemingly poor performance as it plays a crucial role in helping to facilitate tourism. Trans Speaker, talks are supposedly to be in progress with China Express Airlines Company Limited 
to provide charter flights for, sea, for Chinese tourists to Sarawak. But the people would like to know that in the meantime, what is the state government doing to address the limited flights and exorbitant fee fees linking Cebu to other parts of Malaysia? After so many years, why do we not see any outcome from all these efforts, not only in respect of air con connectivity for Cebu, but for the whole Sarawak? Why are the petitions of our ministers falling on deaf ears with the Ministry of Transport? Said you have two minutes to wind up. Since the talks with mass wings mm. have fallen through, the state government must look into something more than just China Express Airlines. To alleviate the people's grievances, the state government should also consider starting our own aviation industry. After all, around 10 years ago, Tony Fernandez started with just one airline. If one man could start with just one airline, I don't see why our state government cannot do the same. Look at the fleet of aircrafts that uh, Tony Fernandez has on this day. Transpeaker, we can start with just one too, just for domestic flight first. Some might say that this is too simplistic and it's too big a dream. But Transpeaker, as the song goes, we need big dreams to take over the world. And as for being too simplistic, where there is a will, there's always a way. Natural farming, one of the main contributors to the growth of our state and to the national income of Malaysia has always come from the agricultural sector. It was also the basis of economic growth and the main contributor in the national economy prior to the 1970s and was one of the main sectors which show up the economic downturn of the 1977 financial crisis. Given its good track record, it is definitely a step in the right direction to promote and develop this sector, as besides self-sufficiency, it will also bring development to the rural areas by reducing imbalance in the urban-rural development in our state. Therefore, it is encouraging that the government has expressed the intention to create a food basket in our <coughs> rural areas in order to develop this sector. But Transpeaker, instead of the usual modern industrial and genetically modified organism-based farming, I urge the government to consider adopting the methods of natural farming with no pesticide, chemicals and so forth. It has been proven in many countries, including Japan, Korea and the Philippines, that natural farming is actually more productive than modern farming. It also involves much lower costs and it is environmentally friendly as it work with nature to produce healthy food to keep ourselves healthy and to keep our land healthy. Transpeaker, natural farming is sustainable farming as it makes all inputs from natural materials. Observe the law of the nature and respect the rights of crops and livestock. Where our land and environment has been destroyed through years of neglect and modern farming, natural farming will heal nature and ecology will be discovered, recovered. It is time that we start to take care of our environment and to recover and preserve the blessings of natural resources in our land in order that we may walk a further distance in this sector. And I conclude by associating myself with all the honourable members in this house to thank the Tuan Yan Te Utama for his presence and gracious uh, address in this day one. Thank you.